Hey guys, so welcome back to this chain ladder series. In the last video, where we got up to is we'd read in our data that results in this data frame here, or triangle if you'd prefer to call it that. And we visualized our data frame or triangle with this graph. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get into the actual details of the chain ladder method and calculate what we'll call our factors and what I mean by that is what we're going to do is what the method essentially says is if you look at it proportionally, so it's a deterministic method in the sense that if you look at it proportionally, if say, for example, we took, I'll just quickly comment these out. If we took that figure and that figure, so this figure has developed an extra year because it's obviously in the two column. So what we want to look at is we want to look at the proportion or the factor here, which is this 1.644 number. And down here, our end goal is to complete this triangle. So it'll turn into a square, a full data frame, and all these NANDs will be gone. And if this was reliable, that claims would typically develop in the same fashion as this 2008 year in 2017. All you have to do then is you just have to take this 2017 figure and just multiply it by our factor there and you get this 340,181 figure which you could then start to populate these figures out here and develop it to an ultimate loss value. Because as we said in the last video, a lot of lines of business in insurance, typically long tail lines, they will develop over a, a large number of years and in some cases decades. So if you were to do that there and use, and we knew that that factor um, that we calculated with this, um, here, we can start building them out. And even though the um, origin year for 2017, we only got one year worth of development data on it, we can extrapolate out and work out what our ultimate claims are gonna be. Now, instead of just using this 2008 year, what the chain ladder method does is because we saw in this plot, I'll show this again, we saw in this plot, there's variation in the lines, so they all look different. So if you say, for example, if you went and took this year, so we took the 2009 year, and have a look at that, that's 21. So that's way different to the 1.64 that we did. So what we'll do in our chain ladder method to calculate our factors, we will, sorry, I'll just delete this. We will cal calculate it over all years. So for our fir what our first factor is gonna be is if we took column two and we went down and we took all these and obviously we won't take the NAN and, and took the sum of this column minus the NAN and divided it by the sum of this column, but we won't go to 2017 because obviously we have nothing to compare it to yet because we have the NAN. And then our first factor here, or our factor between year one and two, is just gonna be the sum of that divided by the sum of that. So we're factoring in to a certain degree the variation between these different uh, lines here. And we'll continue doing that for each period out to the end. So for three, uh, or for factor two, sorry, we'll take three and we'll take it down to here. So this time we're leaving out two rows. And again, when we divide it by column two, we'll have to leave out two rows. And as you can see, as you move along, you're gonna have less data each time to do it, but that's uh, something that you just gotta live with because of the nature of uh, the data we're working with. So let's get started. So we'll come down here and we'll create an empty list and we'll just call it factors. 
and then if we write a loop here and if we go for col in triangle so that's our development triangle or pandas data frame whatever way you want to put it and we can go dot columns and we'll take everything except for the last column so that was uh, 10 and then inside our loop what we can write is we can go fact oops factors dot append and we go triangle we just do um, this just so we can because when you take the triangle dot columns they'll come out as strings so we just need to turn the column here into an integer so we can then add one to it and then we just turn it back into a string and we go dot sum and then divided by triangle col oops there you go negative int again we're just turning the column into an integer there or the column name into an integer and then dot sum and then if we come down here and we just go factors equals and we'll just turn our factors into a uh, numpy array which will help us later and we have a look at that so when we when we get it out we get these figures here so this 2.944 figure if we come back up here and look at the example we were just going through that's the sum of these divided by the sum of these and as you can see as we move along again just to really knock it home that 1.622 is the sum of sum of these divided by the sum of these and it's and it's excluding these four cells down here and what you can see here if we look at these they all go down in a downward fashion which is not always going to be the case and sometimes in practice what you have to do is you have to make manual overrides on these based on your actuarial judgment but for us here each one's moving downwards so we're going to stick with that and keep these as our factors now if we have a look at these we can visualize this as well if we go we'll create a variable here and we'll go dev period for development period and we go numpy array and we'll do a list concat um list comprehension in here and if we go i plus one for i in range nine and then fig ax And then we'll plot this so we'll go ax.plot and we'll put our dev period on the x-axis and our factors on the y-axis and you can set labels we'll set labels just so we're complete here if we go set x label so dev period set y label factor and if we come down here and go plt dot show oops show not shot we have a look at that and we can see that as the development period moves on our factors converging on one so once you've got say for example if this was a more short tail class where it doesn't take as many years or as many periods develop to develop this could be start being one out here and what that would correspond to is that it's just that the sum of the sevens the column here in seven is equal to the sum of this and then so it's already fully developed and you're already at your ultimate loss amount and that'd be reflected here in your factors where it'd be one 
one, 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 one. And you can see that down here in the graph, we're converging on one, but we're not quite there yet. So even the last year, there's still movement between um, the two years or the two development periods. So what that actually suggests is it suggests that we're not actually fully developed yet. And we can take a look at the next, um, in the next video, we'll take a closer look at this because you can't just really assume that the final column here is fully developed. There could be development further out here, which based on our factors looks to be the case because we haven't hit a factor of one yet here. So, and we'll use a method, we'll use a regression method so we can extrapolate out to try to work out what uh, the d development is past the number of columns that we've got in our data here. So we'll have, as I said, we'll have a look at that in the next video. If you thought this one was helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I will see you in the next video.